Hi, my name is Ben and I'm a technical enablement manager here at Sage and I'm going to be talking to you today about Sage Business Cloud Accounting, what that means for you as a developer, some things to consider before starting your integration and also detail some of the help and support you can expect from us here at Sage. The Sage Business Cloud will encompass several applications covering all aspects of running a business. And as the name suggests, accounting is our cloud native accounting solution. Using this software, you'll be able to send and track invoices, handle bank reconciliations, compliance, tax, VAT, and in the UK, you'll be able to deal with the construction industry scheme or CIS, working with subcontractors and making the CIS submission. There are also options to handle products and services, inventory management, quotes, estimates, as well as all things purchasing. Combine these features with our RESTful API and what that gives you as developers are opportunities. Opportunities to expand on features that are already available or take your existing applications that are already solving issues for customers and provide integrations that can both automate and streamline entry into accounting or provide key insights through dashboards and other apps. Not to mention, you'll get the opportunity to tap into our ever expanding customer base. Integration with accounting is achieved via our RESTful API v3.1, which uses OAuth2 for authentication. We have a much more detailed and comprehensive guide on authentication available on our developer portal, as well as another video coming. There is a comprehensive Postman guide to help you get started and test out the API and check out the endpoints that is also going to be available for video and on the developer portal. A key consideration when looking at an integration with accounting is which of the variants you wish to integrate with. Each variant has a different feature set and this helps to ensure that a customer pays for only what they really need. Let's take a look. Coming across to the Sage website, we can see all three variants here. The first we have is our entry level variant called Start from the left, which is designed for small startups that only really have very basic accounting needs such as the ability to create and send sales invoices, the tracking of debtors so that they know what's owed to them, automatic bank reconciliation, the ability to calculate VAT returns and make online submissions. And also you can see here that it supports just the one user as it's aimed at that sole trader and small startup. Next, we come across to the middle here where we have accounting standard, which is our, our most popular variant giving a wider range of features that are suitable for most small businesses. The standard includes everything in start, as well as options for working with the construction industry scheme. So that's working with subcontractors and the ability to make CIS submissions in the UK. It gives you more advanced reporting. Um, it also gives you the option to raise quotes and estimates. You can use forecasting for your cash flow and the ability to raise and send purchase invoices. This will also give you a list of the products and services and the relevant details for them as well. And finally, on the right here, we've got our, our top tier offering, which is Accounting Plus, and that adds a couple of key features that not every business requires. And so as before, Plus includes everything in start and standard, as well as the option for multi-currency invoicing, and also inventory management for products. So handling actual stock quantities and, and things like that. So as you can see in this breakdown, it's important to know just which variants have the features you will likely want to work with via the API. As when connecting to businesses, the underlying business logic ensures only the relevant endpoints are available to use within your own application. We feel that this benefits the customer more than what some of our competitors have as they have unlimited use of the features that they're paying for. This is as opposed to a one-size-fits-all approach that grants access to everything, but imposes restrictions on the number of times features can be used based on price plans. A Sage Business Cloud Accounting is a global product. It is available in different regions. There are some that have compliance-based differences depending on a country's legislation. This could be tax related or say a requirement to include specific extra information when posting invoices. One such example is in Spain, where if a mistake has been made on an invoice, it is vital that that invoice is not altered or changed, even if it hasn't been sent through to the Spanish tax authorities yet. 
It's a requirement that a corrective invoice be raised to fix the earlier mistake. It must include a reference to the original invoice as well as include its own numbering system. This situation is unique to Spain, but one that we've ensured is covered by the aptly named Sales Corrective Invoices endpoint. If you were to go to the API reference in our developer documentation, you'll see that this endpoint is marked as being available for the Spanish region only. Let's take a look. So coming across to the developer portal at developer.sage.com, we want to choose the product for accounting. And as I mentioned, we'll come across here to the API reference. Now, what I would point out while we're here is that what you have actually is endpoint sections rather than one specific set of endpoints. We have so many available in accounting that each of these sections takes you away to a separate API reference. So sometimes, for example, contacts, you'll click it. And the first option for endpoints you see is addresses. And these are basically just groupings that we feel are relevant to the specific tiles that we've given here on the main page. But to discuss the part that we're here for, which is this section on sales corrective invoices, if we come to sales transactions, handily this endpoint is the first one on the list. And you can see here, sales corrective invoices. And it states clearly here that the endpoint is available for Spanish businesses only. And you can also see that here that the, we have a section on every endpoint for the availability. And it's clearly flagged Spain only. Along with that, you can see as we scroll down a bit here, the various different query parameters available with some response samples as well. So there you have it. Some of the key things to be aware of before you dive into your integration. But what happens if you have questions or where can you turn for support? We have a number of different channels available. Your first port of call for any developer related query should be our developer documentation for accounting which is available at developer.sage.com forward slash accounting. There you'll find a quick start guide, our API reference, and also some key detailed guides taking you through processes involving invoicing, authentication, and much more. These key concepts, as we like to call them, will also be translated over the coming months to video format so that those of you that prefer this medium can sit back and just enjoy watching the content. Next, we have our Sage Developer Community Forum, which is available at developer-community.sage.com. Here you'll be able to ask questions about anything API related, endpoints, authentication, and there you'll get help from Sage staff, including myself, as well as being able to discuss it with the wider developer community. Last, but by no means least, we have a fantastic dedicated support team available for accounting API queries in the form of our UK Developer Services team. They can be reached via email Monday to Friday, 9am to 5pm UK time on sbc-accounting-api-developers at sage.com. Just rolls off the tongue that, doesn't it? We'll have links to all of this and the other support methods in the description below. Thanks a lot for watching. And I really do hope this video has been helpful for you. Please let us know the kinds of things that you'd like to see on the channel whether that's in feedback, in comments, or just via the community. And we'll do our very best to accommodate that in the future. Thanks again. Best of luck with your integrations.